Hi guys, thank you very much for joining me. My name is Tom and I'm the Tech Chap and this is my in-depth review of the brand new Dell XPS 13. This is the 9350 model, which is the sequel, the update to the 9343 model, which came out in January 2015. This has the new Skylake chip from Intel inside. This has the i5-6200U, but generally this is still one of the best, if not the best, ultra portable laptops you can get. And one of the main reasons for that is what you can see here, the Infinity Edge display. It's the almost bezel-less uh, display, which means this is a 13.3 inch device in a 11 inch form factor. So it means it's incredibly compact, very, very portable and very light as well. So it's great for a, a traveling companion, great for uh, just doing bits of office work, for browsing and also some light video editing and even gaming. It's powerful enough now for that. The battery's been improved as well. And as I say, a few of the issues around the uh, fan, the noise, the trackpad and the battery of the older model have also been addressed to some extent. So let's jump right into this in-depth review and take a close look at the design and build of the new XPS 13. So while this is the new Skylake version, you wouldn't actually know just by looking at it as the design, the build quality, the look and feel is pretty much identical to the 9343 model which came out back in January 2015. This is 1.27 kilograms heavy, that's 2.7 pounds, which is for the non-touch version. It goes up to 2.9 pounds uh, if you opt for the higher res touch option. It has an aluminium body chassis, uh, as you can see all around, so it's a very, very uh, premium looking finish, uh, quite similar to a MacBook Air, and uh, definitely a premium and uh, professional looking device. If we open the device up, the uh, palm rest area is a carbon fiber effect. It's uh, very soft, it's uh, very nice to, uh, to have your, uh, your palms on it, it doesn't get too hot or too cold or anything. Uh, so that's, it looks nice, it feels nice, and the trackpad is glass and feels just like a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. It's that very high quality premium uh, glass trackpad, which I'm a big fan of. This, as I say, is 1.27 kilograms. It's also 15 millimeters thick at its uh, widest point and nine millimeters thick at its thinnest point. So very, very compact and very ultra portable. I would say it's not the easiest to open. There is no uh, lip on the bottom here that you can get your nail in or your finger in to open it. It's definitely a, a two-handed device to open. As you can see, I'm struggling with that. So uh, definitely two hands needed to hold the base keyboard down and to then the other to open the display. It's nice to know there's almost no screen wobble. Uh, if I uh, bring the camera up slightly, uh, you can see that, although just pressing it like that, it has almost no wobble and uh, general moving, moving it about. Uh, is very very good so you could use this on a train and a plane or a bus and you uh, don't have to worry about it uh, wobbling like some uh, ultra portables do and especially those two-in-ones you can get these days uh, screen wobble is something that's a bit of an issue with those including the new surface book in fact so this is a very positive very sturdy and uh, does uh, suggest that this is a very well-built premium looking device so of course one of the main selling points of this is the fact that it's a 13.3 inch display within an 11 inch size body the form factor is of an 11 inch laptop which means it's incredibly portable very light very compact and great for uh, on the go so that's almost entirely a result of the infinity display which uh, as you can see pops up there it takes about three seconds to wake up which is very good we'll talk about that a bit more uh, with the performance later on so it's this infinity display with five mil bezels either side uh, top sides and also a thicker bezel of the bottom which houses the webcams in a still awkward uh, position we'll talk about that more as well a bit later on so very classy very professional looking i think this uh, display does stand out no other laptop has anything like this and you will probably get some jealous looks from uh, people if you are on public transport using this or out and about in a coffee shop for example but before we look at the display and performance in more detail let's have a quick look at the port so on the left side we've got the uh, chuck the plug for the uh, for the charger. We have a brand new USB Type C, which is also a Thunderbolt 3 uh, port here. So that's a it's reversible. B it uh, has a much higher data transfer speed. And C you can actually you can actually charge a laptop. I've been asked about this uh, through this port, which means you could theoretically, if your mobile devices, if all your other devices. Uh, or eventually USB Type-C, you could have one charger for them all. Bear in mind, a normal phone charger like uh, you'd get with the Nexus 6P, for example, won't charge this. It's not powerful enough. You do need a, a stronger, more like the 60-watt 
USB Type-C charger that Google sell, uh, and here in the UK that's $49.99, which is uh, frankly a ridic ridiculous price for a charger. But you know, you, apparently it, it does charge it uh, through that, so it's nice to know uh, for uh, future-proofing reasons. Next to that, we have a more standard USB 3 port, a 3.5 millimeter jack, as well as a battery LED indicator. So if I to press this, uh, the LED lights should come up. Uh, it requires quite a precise press, as you can see. Uh, I know it's coming up, it's just uh, being dark. So you can see that's fully charged there. These lights indicate uh, obviously how much battery there is. There's also one of the uh, two side mounted speakers here. These are one watt and very, very good. Let's swap over to the right hand side where we have a SD card reader, which is extremely helpful, especially for me who is a bit of a photographer and uh, a video maker. So that's incredibly useful. We also have another USB 3 port and a Noble lock port, as well as a second side mounted speaker. Internally in terms of connections we have uh, the latest Bluetooth 4.1 as well as a dual channel so that's 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi AC. That uh, Wi-Fi card is a 2x2 MIMO card which is the best uh, for connections. It means you can get more reliable connections from further away from the router. So very very advanced in terms of uh, internal Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and also I think the port selection is very impressive for something so thin. Right so let's move on to something a bit more exciting. Let's have a look at the display. So this is the 13.3 inch 1920 by 1080 IPS display. IPS means it has fantastic viewing angles and I'll demonstrate that in just a second. This is also the non-touch matte version. It's the one of the cheaper models. You can get a high res QHD 3800 by 1800 resolution display which also is also touchscreen and also comes with a glossy screen as opposed to matte like this one. Personally I prefer matte but that's very subjective and depending on what your use for it will be you may in fact prefer the glossy one but it's worth bearing in mind that you can get a high res one, you can get a touch one, you can get a glossy one but it does cost a little bit more and also the high res does have an impact on the battery life. So being full HD and 13.3 inches in diameter that gives it a pixel per inch density of 165 which if you compare it to the Retina MacBook Pro which is 227 it's not quite as sharp it isn't a market leading sharpness but for a, a ultrabook this size I think it's still very very serviceable and uh, unless you look close you really can't see the pixels I think 1080p at a 13 inch screen size is really the perfect Goldilocks resolution if you will because anything more you're gonna have to start worrying about scaling and uh, older programs uh, being too small and icons being too small I think for the battery benefits I think for the uh, icons and the text and the DPI scaling issues 1080p really is the best optimal resolution for a screen this size. If you opt for the larger 15 inch model, maybe it could be worth going up to the 3800 by 1800 res if you want. Now being an IPS panel and also I think having the matte display helps this to have one of the best viewing angles I've ever seen on a laptop. So if I close the lid slowly and as the angle becomes more acute, you can see that there's very little color and brightness uh, fall off. It's very, very impressive. So I think the screen is absolutely beautiful and I think we should start talking about screen to body ratios with uh, laptop screens as well, not just phones, because this would certainly come out on top of that and it'd be a good uh, measurement for uh, sort of the, how compact you can make laptops by trying to get that screen to body ratio up even higher. So subjectively, this is really nice and really impressed. I have seen, although not uh, owned the earlier I, uh, the earlier XPS model, which has the same 1080p non-touch screen. I would say the screens does do look the same. I don't think this has been improved over that one, but that was also very good even when that came out. So I think the screen is the same, but that doesn't mean uh, that's not, ba not that's not a bad thing at all. That still means it's very very good. Now in terms of brightness, that's been a bit of an issue that people have been asking about. This, according to Dell, can go up to 400 nits. But in my experience, it doesn't go quite that high. And also other reviews and reports I've read suggest it actually goes up to more between 250 and 300 nits. So not the brightest on the market for sure. And you may struggle in direct sunlight. I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, you can change it, uh, the brightness manually on the keyboard uh, using a, these keys here. Or you can, uh, if I bring that back up, you can go to the, if you can go to the settings at the bottom, the little icon here where the battery is and change what uh, brightness you wish. So I found the 50% brightness um, preset to be uh, perfectly usable for uh, office work inside. I found uh, I did need to be at 100% though if I was out and about on a train for example using it. So uh, I've never had, any, I've never struggled to uh, see the screen. A lot of people think that um, these XPS's are a bit dark and while they're not the brightest for sure I didn't struggle at all. There was also a uh, issue with the earlier models where uh, there was sort of a forced automatic brightness 
uh, adjustment that uh, you wouldn't have any control over. And in certain applications, it would get dark and you couldn't control it. Well, it, this may still be there. I'm not actually sure, but I haven't seen any of that myself. You do get the ability in the battery icon to set battery saver mode, which does uh, dim the screen slightly but uh, it related to the ambient light. But uh, generally, if with that off, which you can just disable it like I just did then, uh, I didn't see any adjustment. If that was an issue, then I haven't seen that here, so perhaps I could say it's gone, but uh, certainly I haven't had any issues with the brightness, and it's been perfectly good, although, as I say, not the brightest uh, on sort of compared to the competition. Colors also look great. If I let's go into the browser and open, open up a website, you can see the whites look uh, nice and rich and properly white. They're not oversaturated yellow, nor are they undersaturated blue. It's not supposed to be a uh, professionally color graded display. It's uh, Dell claim this is going to have 72% RGB, and uh, in the reports I've read, this is actually more like 65, 66%. So it's not going to be perfect for professional photographers editing photos, but um, for me, I found this to be uh, really nice colors, generally very nice, vibrant, not too oversaturated, as I say, not undersaturated either. The reds come across naturally here, and the whites are nice and rich and bright and white. And even watching movies, uh, you can the blacks are black, they're not gray or anything. So I'm very impressed with it subjectively, well, objectively and technically, it may not be the most accurate display. So let's talk about the performance and the storage. Pre-installed, we have Windows 10 64-bit. Inside, we have a Skylake i5 6200U, which is clocked at 2.3 gigahertz although I've seen that it can go anywhere between 400 megahertz and 2.8 gigahertz as it adjusts and turbo boosts to match whatever it is you're doing, which is good for battery life, and uh, but also means that if you are doing something more intensive like video editing or gaming, it can turbo boost up to a high 2.8 gigahertz and give you that extra performance that you need. So this sixth generation Skylake i5 comes with the Intel 520 integrated graphics. It is still integrated, so it's not going to do any proper gaming at all, but it is one of the best integrated uh, graphics chips you can get, which means you can uh, handle video editing and light gaming reasonably well. We also have 8GB of DDR3L RAM, so it's not the latest, fastest DDR4, but it is the low-powered one, which is better for battery life and efficiency. One of the most impressive parts of the new XPS is just how fast and fluid and responsive it feels. You can see just it, it loads things up so quickly. In fact, before I've even finished typing almost, uh, you can see that it's sort of opening apps. It's very, very fast, very impressive, and um, you can see that everything just opens in a blink of an eye, and that's a thanks largely to the uh, not only the Skylake chip and the fact that we're on Windows 10, but also the SSD it's using. So this has a 256 gigabyte SSD built in. It's using the much faster NVMe PCIe technology as a solid state drive, which uh, technical jargon aside basically means it has much faster read times, nearly twice as fast as a normal uh, 840 Evo SSD, which I tested against, which I have in my desktop PC. Very, very fast read times, although actually quite strangely fairly slow uh, write times. But regardless of that, the combination of the fast PCIe uh, SSD and the fact that we've got Windows 10, a Scarlet chip, and uh, basically just optimized software means that this is incredibly fast. And uh, if you're looking for something that is uh, boots up Word, it wakes up quick. It's really, really uh, quick. As I say, the performance, you're not going to get um, particularly good gaming out of it. Let me, I uh, took the liberty of installing uh, Fallout 4 for you guys so you could see how that runs on this. And uh, I'll spoiler alert, it's not very good. So it actually looks really nice on the screen. This is at the lowest possible settings if I continue my save game. So we're running on the Intel 520 integrated graphics chip here. Um, so that obviously being integrated means this isn't designed for gaming and this is also an ultra portable so uh, gaming really isn't on the table except for older games but as you can see uh, it does it does run uh, but the, I'm getting a probably about 10 frames per second here it really isn't usable to any extent now while Fallout 4 isn't the most graphically demanding game it is obviously a very new game so you will ha be, be do better with older games at lower settings of course as well but uh, you know it's playable it, it, well I say playable it runs but uh, if you're happy to uh, play this at 10 frames per second or so uh, then good luck to you but this really isn't designed for this level of gaming even though this isn't a particularly intensive game. But what this laptop can do very well is video editing. So while it may not play games particularly well, this is a full HD video, 1080p, if I uh, shut my shut my own mouth there. And you can see that it, uh, it plays in the preview box perfectly well, and uh, there's no issue at all. I've tested it with multiple 1080p uh, video uh, streams, so it, it's, it is perfectly usable. 
as a video editing device, which is great for me because I'm going to be using this uh, as I go to trade shows and on the road uh, to uh, upload and edit videos. So the fact that it can do 1080p at 60 FPS as well, uh, very well, is is a great is great news. So while I can do 1080p video editing quite well, as you can see here, this is a piece of 4K footage I filmed for my Apple TV review. It's a lot more stuttery, a lot uh, more juddery, and uh, definitely not nearly as smooth as a 1080p. So uh, I think you could say that this is definitely a, a great laptop for. Uh, editing up to full HD content. That's something I will definitely be doing as I take it on to trade shows and out and about on the on the go. But uh, I don't think I would comfortably edit 4K on this. It's not quite powerful enough, unfortunately. So you can do light gaming for older games. You can do video editing up to 1080p comfortably, although it will uh, do 4K, but as I say, a bit a bit slowly, a bit stuttery. So uh, generally very, very impressive performance for an Ultrabook with an integrated graphics chip. It really is pretty much silent for 99% of the time I've used it, only except when I've been trying Fallout or I've been uh, testing the 4K stuff, which doesn't even it doesn't even do that well. Uh, did it come up to a, a slightly audible where I, uh, put, I put a decibel meter to it and it came out about 35 decibels at its loudest. So this is very, very quiet and therefore a, a significant improvement over the earlier models. So you can take my word for it that it is almost silent pretty much all the time. So I'm very, very impressed. And as a result, obviously the, it's, the fan isn't going as strong and you think therefore it was going to heat up even more but it's not it's actually stays very cool to the touch almost all over the only place it does get slightly warm is underneath at the back where uh, the fan is but that it never gets beyond what i would describe as warm it's never hot or uncomfortable so very impressive thermals and almost silent throughout so uh, dead impressed with that and clearly dell has taken on board the issues with the older model and uh, completely fixed them that could well as be a result of the skylight chip being more power efficient and uh, not quite as intensive but uh, whatever it is it's it's fixed so very quiet very cool so that's very impressive so the next thing to talk about is the keyboard and the touchpad Obviously the uh, typing experience is quite subjective, so uh, what I think may be nice you may not agree with, but this chiclet style keyboard I think is exceptional for a laptop this thin. There's almost no flex in it, which is something that thin laptops like this usually suffer from. As you can see, I'm pressing quite firmly, and although there's a tiny bit of flex in the middle with a real firm press, uh, you, you'll never really notice that in normal use, and it's very, very good for that. The keys have about 1.3 millimeters of travel, uh, and while they do sound a bit spongy, if I put the mic up to it and type, So let's do a quick typing test. Let me just bring up Word. You can see how fast that opens, uh, going back to the performance. And if I just do a quick typing uh, example, the quick brown fox jumped. So I can touch type and I do uh, write a lot as uh, from, from, for a living. So uh, when I say that I'm very impressed with this keyboard, I do mean it. I tend to use a, a desktop to do most of my writing, which comes with a full keyboard and obviously much more travel, but uh, this actually feels very, very nice. And I'd say comparable, equal even, to my uh, MacBook Pro, which I was using before this, in terms of how comfortable and how accurately I can type. The touchpad isn't quite as good. It does feel very nice. It feels premium, very smooth, and quite responsive throughout, uh, thanks to this uh, glass surface. You've got two clicks, the left and the right, as you can hear. So very reassuring clicks there, or of course you can just tap anywhere and it uh, registers a single click or double uh, do, double press to do a right click. Uh, so while this isn't as consistently accurate, uh, in my opinion, as a MacBook, it is a lot better than most Windows laptops. I did read that quite a few people had issues with the touchpad on the old XPS model. And although I do believe this is the same touchpad as well as the same keyboard as the old model, I think recent drivers from Dell and also uh, more recent drivers from Windows 10 have actually substantially improved it over the older XPS model. I did notice it was a little slow out of the box uh, in terms of the trackpad cursor speed, but that can be very quickly um, changed in the settings. So that is something I recommend doing. Also, I noticed it was a little bit uh, slow in Chrome. And once again, you can get an extension like uh, Smooth Scroll uh, to make that more uh, consistent. So as you can see, it's not the smoothest in the whole world. It does work well, even with a two finger scrolling. But and so it's pretty good for that. One thing I did notice, though, is that the Edge browser is a lot nicer to use with the touchpad than Chrome. And that suggests that it is Chrome that we have an issue with here as opposed to uh, the, the touchpad itself. So while uh, Edge is very, very smooth, Chrome is pretty good. It takes sort of a, a quarter of a second to sort of uh, recognize your 
your double finger scrolling in the first place. But it works well. And the only other issue I do have with the touchpad is sometimes it feels like it's stuck on a, a single click. Like there, I, I didn't even click anything. I, I meant to just sort of move my finger around. But as you can see here, it's sort of considered that I'm trying to drag uh, drag and hold it, which I'm not at all trying to do. That is one thing I found a few times happen, and you had to sort of then click off it. So I suppose the way of describing that is that the touch sometimes sticks, as if you had it held a press and then drags across the screen or the text, which, uh, as, you, as you can see there, uh, that does happen sometimes in pretty much all such, all situations, and I haven't really found out how to stop it, but it is quite rare, and I suspect 95% of the time this works pretty well. So the touchpad isn't perfect. It certainly isn't the best part of the device, unlike the keyboard, which is a lot more impressive in my opinion. So let's talk about battery life. Inside we have a 56 watt hour integrated battery. That's up from 52 on the old model. So uh, basically we should be getting a bit of a better battery life thanks to the larger battery, as well as having a more power efficient sky chip unfortunately we don't um, my experience as well as those of other reviewers suggest that it has almost exactly the same battery life as the older model uh, and for me for light to moderate use that's around 10 hours which is still very good brightness i tend to have set at 50 percent this is 100 now because it's uh, for demonstration purposes uh, but i'm quite happy with it being at 50 percent and i found that with battery saver enabled and 50 percent brightness i do get about 10 hours of web browsing of word of, of office use of bit of spotify and uh, general sort of light to moderate use so office use so you get a good 10 hours out of that so while that isn't the full 16 or 18 hours that dell claim you can get from it i think 10 hours is still very good from this i did a couple of video playback tests and uh, i watched a two hour video on youtube and found that that drained the battery from 100 down to 70%. So therefore, two hours of video equals 30% of battery, which means you should be able to get about seven hours of video playback at the 50% brightness with battery saving enabled. So again, while it may not be a huge step up over its predecessor, I would say seven hours of video playback, of HD video playback, is still very impressive and will uh, do for the vast majority of people out there. It also charges pretty fast too. It takes about two and a quarter hours to charge from zero to 100%. And I'm also impressed how small and compact the uh, battery adapter is, the power pack, which you need to charge the laptop. It's really small, really light, and will fit uh, alongside it, the, the laptop well in a backpack or a suitcase. It really is very small and um, complements the fact that this is very much an ultra-portable travel compact laptop. So we've covered most of the important things about the XPS 13, but there's a couple of extras I'd like to talk to you guys about, including the webcam, which is still uh, annoyingly placed down here in the bottom left corner, right down here. You can see me covering my finger here. So as opposed to it being on the top of it, uh, because there's such a thin bezel, we have it at the bottom just above the keyboard. So what that means is basically if I'm Skyping you, if I'm video calling you, if I'm doing a uh, video conference, you will we all, you will all be looking up my nose, which is uh, not the best, unfortunately. It is a compromise as a result of the thin bezel, and it's not the end of the world, at least there is one. It is 720p in quality, and as you can see, it's not the end of the world. It's quite serviceable and uh, better than nothing, but uh, its peculiar placement at the bottom left is a bit annoying, and I think people will get a bit uh, fed up of looking up my nose pretty shortly so um, if you're going to be using this to do a lot of video conferences then uh, you may want to look elsewhere. One final thing I'd like to mention is the speakers. Basically they're really really good, they're fantastic. Uh, there's, they're one watt in power and they're side mounted. There's two, there's one on the left side here if I put the light on. and uh, There's one here and there's another one on the other side. So while uh, laptops this small are usually usually have terrible speakers, really, really tinny and uh, lacking in bass, lacking in quality. The speakers on the XPS 13, while the same as the one on the older XPS, uh, they're not really improved, I don't think. They are very, very good. Actually, one of the best speakers I've ever ha heard on a laptop, regardless of size. So let me play a quick tune for you. I'll shut up and you can, guys can hear just how uh, bassy and substantial the sound is, despite having such a small laptop. So very impressed with the speakers, not something I thought I would be. In conclusion, I'm a really big fan of the new Dell XPS 13. It's one of the best Ultrabooks I've ever used, and I really, really would highly recommend it. It's a combination of the great screen, fantastic compact form factor, really solid keyboard, good trackpad, and generally very good performance and battery life. Even though the Scarlet chip may not make a night and day difference to performance and battery efficiency really doesn't add much to the battery at all, the general performance increase, the fact that you can do video editing and even a little bit of light gaming, although it really isn't a gaming laptop, means that it really is a very good 
all-rounder and uh, I don't have any hesitation recommending it. The trackpad issues, the keyboard issues of the other device, perhaps they're not still, um, they're still there to some extent perhaps, the trackpad especially, I, but I really do think uh, that the updated drivers have made a big difference and they're very, very solid. Uh, the trackpad doesn't quite compare in my opinion to uh, the consistent quality and accuracy of say from the MacBook Pros uh, and MacBook Airs, but the keyboard, I'm a, I'm, I'm a big fan of the keyboard, it's very, very comfortable to type on and uh, I wrote this, uh, my brief for this uh, review on this keyboard and I had no trouble at all and it's a very very nice experience. The screen, matte IPS, 1080p, 13.3 inch and 11 inch uh, body still is one of the selling points. No other company, no other laptop comes close to offering this sort of compact form factor within this sort of screen size. And of course it's bigger brother, the XPS 15 uh, comes down to about a 14 inch form factor. So if you want a bigger laptop, but still something compact for its size, then you may want to consider the larger, more expensive Dell XPS 15. So this incredibly premium and professional looking laptop isn't cheap. Uh, it starts at £849. This model is about £950. This is the model I'd recommend. It's the i5-6200U, which comes with 8 gigs of RAM and uh, 256 gigabytes of storage. You can get more expensive uh, touch uh, models with a QHD resolution, but the touch, uh, not only is it more expensive, but the uh, higher resolution does have an impact on the battery life. I think you can knock off about two, uh, maybe two and a half hours off the battery life of this one if you do up for the touch model. So while this is an exceptional laptop, it does have strong competition. The Yoga 900, the new Surface Book, the uh, Asus UX305 laptops, as well as of course the MacBook Pro 13. All very, very good alternatives and all in a similar price range, give or take a couple hundred quid. So this has been my review of the new Dell XPS 13. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of it in the comments, whether you'll be getting one. And uh, if you've got any more questions about this laptop, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you again on the Tech Channel.